Welcome back friends. In this video tutorial, I'll be talking about solving the pedigree problems, right? So let me take a color. Okay, fine. Now, here in this video, uh, this is a pattern, uh, this is a pedigree chart. It is telling us four different uh, generations and it is showing that this dark shaded uh, part is an infected individual and the blank one is a uninfected or non-infected individual. So let's find what is the type of pattern for this particular disease. Right now, there can be four different patterns. Remember, autosomal dominant. So let me write. If I write it here, autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, uh, sex-linked dominant, and sex-linked recessive. So there can be these four different types of uh, transfer or, or inheritance pattern can be possible. Now, in this case. Uh, let us first talk about uh, what is it. Uh, it is going to be a dominant or a recessive trait. So this is going to be your first. So when you're solving this kind of problems, the first important thing you should keep in mind that is uh, whether this is a dominant or a recessive. So you need to find whether it is a dominant or a recessive. Now in this case, how to find that? So remember, if this is dominant trait, that definitely if parent one of the parent is infected, then definitely it is going to be transferred to the uh, progeny right but in case of recessive this may not be the case so let's find it now in this case this is a parent infected now their progeny get the disease now again say this is another parent we are infected their progeny get the disease now if we take this one as this is a parent their progeny get the disease again this is if this is a parent their progeny get the disease so we can see that in each generation if parents are infected their infants are also infected that means it is a kind of dominant trait right so dominant dominant trait so this is the first important thing now the second part we need to study whether it is a x linked or an autosomal right so how to find this remember in x linked inheritance there is a typical characteristic and the typical characteristic uh, that we all know is criss cross right now if it is x linked it is a criss cross so let me write criss cross Right, crisscross pattern of inheritance, uh, but in autosomal there is no crisscross, so it can be from mother to uh, uh, son and daughter and both these cases, right? Uh, so let's find here. In this case, uh, this uh, so so first of all another important thing to figure it out between the sex-linked and autosomal disease is to look for whether so now you'll be uh, looking for sex-linked or autosomal. So let me take a color here. You'll be seeing the whether it is a sex-linked or it's an autosomal right so how to find that out to find this out we need to look for is there any sex biased or not so sex biased mean whether uh, all the females are affected all the males are affected or not now in this case we can see males and females are almost equally uh, affected in all these cases almost e equally affected right uh, so males are affected females are affected in all this case so uh, there is uh, no sex biased scene in this particular case that this is not enough to tell that this is not sex linked because uh, in many tricky questions they can provide you this kind of thing but uh, ultimately the result is uh, something else right so if you get this kind of result so dominant is proven so you can easily prove whether it is a dominant or recessive I, we have proved that it is a dominant trait but not a recessive but we cannot uh, prove this whether it is a sex linked or a autosomal by just looking at it by using our simple tricks so what we need to follow we need to follow uh, uh, the pedigree genotypic analysis so let's uh, find the genotypic analysis in this case so how to follow the genotypic analysis we need to write down the genotypes and uh, the predicted genotypes of each of these individuals so that we get the, our ultimate results for example say first let's talk about the autosomes then we'll talk about uh, the sex linked so these two autosomal recessive and sex linked recessive these are eliminated because recessive cannot be the trait now in this case my, uh, either autosomal dominant or sex linked dominant so let's first talk about if it, they, this trait is following the autosomal dominant pattern now let's say uh, autosomal dominant means if either of the copy let's say if the disease is uh, denoted with this a now if either of the copy so three different versions double a double capital a capital a small a and a small a small a now this small a small a is means the recessive homozygous recessive this is heterozygous and this is homozygous dominant now if the trait is a dominant type then either it is a homozygous dominant or heterozygous in both the way they are going to infect the individual right 
and if it is homozygous recessive only in that case the individual will be affect uh, or, or uh, effectless right now in this case let's find it out so let's think this is the infected one so if i put this uh, so this is uninfected so you simply put a double uh, small a because that that, that signifies uh, the uh, not the infection now here it can be double a or it can be capital a small a so either it, uh, it can be so let's look at it here so it is can, it, the, the other a here it could be a capital a or it could be a small a in all these cases so we don't uh, we don't know what is it right now let's uh, look at in this case so they are offsprings so if uh, the so so this is small a small a because uninfected and again let's say this is also uninfected small a small a now we are having all these three now all of them are infected now if it is a uh, uh, capital a small a then in all this case what we are going to have we are going to have a capital a small a here capital a small a here and also a capital a small a here right so if if, if it is a capital a small a or if this parent is heterozygous so in those case we can have this kind of traits now let's look at this case so if this is a capital a small a here and this one is uninfected so small a small a now their offspring are going to have this is a capital a small a this is again small a small a this is again capital a small a and again this last one is again small a small a uninfected right now again in this case let let us take this one as an example this father is capital a small a heterozygous having the disease now let's say there is a mother is uninfected so small a small a now their offspring one of their offspring uh, is going to get a small a from the father one small a from the mother so get small a small a now this individual is getting one capital a from the father one small a from the mother so capital a small a and result infected this individual is getting one small a from father one small a from mother so small a small a uninfected the last individual is again getting one capital a from father one small a from mother so capital a small a so what we can see if we follow if we think that uh, this particular trait is an autosomal dominant and if we uh, keep on putting all the genotypes for the dominant pattern it is going to explain this pedigree right so the pedigree is completely explained with this autosomal dominant trait that is telling us that this trait is going to be autosomal dominant now we proven lucky here because we haven't start uh, for this sex link dominant we've started with autosomal dominant it is found to be yes this trait is following the autosomal dominant but it can be possible that when we, once we start this process we find that this trait uh, this particular pattern is not explaining and in those case we need to follow then the sex link type right so Similarly, if we if we do in this case, if we if we solve this case, so what we are going to get, if this individual is uh, small a small a uninfected, so here the first one is capital a small a, so it is affected. Now this one is getting small a from father, small a from mother, uninfected. Again, this one is getting uh, small a from father, small a from mother, uninfected. So again, that is going to be the answer, right? So it is clearly explainable with autosomal dominant. So we can tell that yes, this is a autosomal dominant kind of trait. Okay. So now let's. Now let's move on, move on to the next part. Okay. Now let's say here, this is another, this is another problem. So let's find this answer for this problem. Again, four possibilities are there: dominant and recessive possibilities. So first, we need to figure out whether it is a dominant. So we need whether it is a dominant or a recessive or a recessive. So how can you find it out? Simply by looking it. Now you can see here, this is the first generation. Both are affected. Individuals are affected. Here also one parent is affected. As a result, one individual is affected. So following the dominant trait. But in this third case, both of them, father and mother, are uninfected. And their progeny is also uninfected. That is telling us, yes, the pattern uh, which is showing that whatever uh, result we are getting in parents, we are getting the reflection of that same pattern in the offspring. So that is telling us yes, this is a kind of dominant trait, right? If it is a recessive, then in uh, one parental generation it can be a disease. In the other generation, it, it, it may not uh, lead to the disease, for example, like that. Now in this case, we can see whatever happens to the parental generation, it reflects uh, in the progeny. In the, it reflects in the offspring, uh, at least one of the offsprings, right? So again, it's a dominant. So once we know that it is a dominant kind of trait. We need to follow whether it is an autosomal dominant or a sex link dominant. So, second question: whether it is a autosomal or a sex linked or a 
is x linked now let's follow that so let's first start to again with this assumption of sex linked in this case let's start with whether it's a sex linked or not let's find it out now for finding sex linked how to find the sex linked we all know that this is most of the time are sex biased but we can see here the distribution of the disease is almost in male and female uh, almost like equal distribution so uh, let's find it out using uh, the genotypic analysis okay so let's first start to put the genotypes for this disease so for example here this individual is affected so let's say again the diseased uh, as a as diseased uh, phenotype if it is a dominant so dominant means heterozygous can lead to disease homozygous dominant uh, definitely lead to disease and ac uh, only homozygous recessive will not develop into any disease right so whatever uh, undiseased person we are getting they are homozygous uh, recessive in this case right so in case of sex linked we'll be writing it like that so let's write x uh, so this is a male so we need to take care of male and female because this is x and y and it is affected so we'll be putting here uh, a that means it's an affected now this one is also affected that means it's a, it's a if it's a dominant trait that means if it's a x a x then it should be affected like that or it could be x a x a right both the way this individual can be affected now here it is a uninfected uh, female so we are having an x x uninfected this is the infected male so we are having x a y like that okay now let's follow the uh, this pattern so if we follow this particular pattern now we are having uh, two two children in this case so x uh, so this is an infected one so it must have one x from this uh, mother which is uninfecting X from his mother and this another X because father is having only one X so this X must be there so X a so what we are getting here one uninfected X and one infected X so we know that if this is a dominant trait and we know that this trait is following the dominant pattern it is sure for that right so if it is a dominant then in those case if we get this one it will lead to disease right it must lead to disease but in this case we what we get here if we follow this pattern using sex link dominant we get this genotype for this particular female so this female must be diseased right but the pedigree shows that the female is uninfected and that is telling us we are providing or, or doing a mistake that means whatever we have chosen as the type of uh, analysis or as the type of inheritance pattern is wrong so it is not sex link type what remains is the autosomal so now let's uh, do this using autosomals or autosomal type of inheritance right so let me erase all of them so now let's follow the autosomal trait and try to solve this problem using autosome because we kind of uh, become uh, clear about that so let me take sorry let me take this and delete this part okay now let's take the color okay let's begin now if it's the autosomal trait let's find it now so it's a dominant so obviously if it's autosome uh, trait uh, so it can be this this trait can be affecting both this case and this is affected so let's write this can be capital a small a heterozygous or it can be homozygous dominant capital a capital a both the way it will infect uh, this particular individual and this individual is uninfected so we'll be putting simply small a small a because uh, this homozygous recessive is only going to give us uninfected individual if you are following the autosomal dominant trait right now if we follow this particular because this is going to be a critical because uh, they are having two infections so let's find out this one so if uh, they are going to mate together so they are having children two children is uh, there so let's take here so small a from this mother and small a from this uh, father so definitely this individual is uninfected so that is telling us that one a is coming from mother and one a definitely should come from father so that, that is telling us that this particular phenomena uh, of having the double a double capital a trait is not possible so this is going to be the trait okay so you know the what is the actual trait of the father now once we get the genotype here so this is and again this capital a and this small a is giving us this infected individual so once we get that similarly if we look at this one because this is uninfected so if you look at this one capital a capital a transfer can give us to this disease capital a small a transfer can give us this one capital a from father one from one small a from mother it is giving us this capital a small a which is also lead to the diseased person now this third one we are having one small a from father one small a from mother what is as a result 
uninfected individual. So now what we get, both of them are uninfected individual here in this progeny, this this uh, male and this female. So if they met and they have child, so all of them, uh, there is no possibility of getting a capital A. So all of them will receive small a, small a. So as a result, all of them will be uninfected. So that is telling us, yes, we can explain this particular pedigree using dominant, an autosomal dominant type of uh, trait. Right? So we can follow that. We can tell that yes, this particular pedigree is following the autosomal dominant trait. Right? So that's how you, you can solve the problems of pedigree chart. And I hope that's helpful. Thank you.